Welcome to the Native Diamond Podcast. Oh, shit! What you waiting for? Please don't forget to like the video, hit subscribe, ring the bell. That way you're notified every time I drop a new episode of Native, Native Diamond, Diamond Podcast. Podcast. Feel free to drop a comment because I love hearing feedback from you guys. Without further ado, let's get into today's episode. What's going on guys? Seth Mick here. This is Native Diamond Podcast. And today I have a very special guest. I have Nathan Dillon from the band Day Shifter, UK Melodic Hardcore. What's going on, Nathan? I'm good, you? Pretty good. Can't complain today. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, no worries, man. So basically, how I start off every episode, I start off with icebreaker questions, either or, quick ones off the top. You just say the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, that's cool. All right, first question. Kurt Cobain or John Lennon? Oh, man. I grew up on the beat also with John Lennon. Blackjack or poker? I know how to play poker, so I'll go with poker. Horror movie or action movie? Uh, I'm more into action movies. Like, I, I can't stand horrors. Uh, what's your favorite action movie? Uh, me and my last watch a lot of the Marvel films and stuff like that. Make Them Suffer or Hollow Front? Make Them Suffer. I've heard more of them than Hollow Front. A song you know all the lyrics to? A lot of like Monster Flame songs because I, I just jam them all the time. Yeah, maybe Empty the Same or anything from their second album, like Feast for the Crows. Sick breakdown or sick solo? Definitely breakdowns. So I'm not a shreddy guy. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite pop song? I like a lot of like Juice World. Mm-hmm. The classic is like kind of pop. Definitely. Post Malone as well. Like Mosh Pit or Standing in the Back? Oh, I'm old now, so I stand in the back. Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? Street Fighter. Straight up. Rick and Morty or American Dad? American Dad. I never got into Rick and Morty. I know loads of people love it, but I never got into it. Xbox or PlayStation? Uh, I'm an Xbox guy. Who would win in a fight? Black Panther or Spider-Man? Black Panther. Straight up. Pierce the Veil or A Day to Remember? Probably A Day to Remember. I've seen both, but like, definitely probably A Day to Remember. White Chapel or Chelsea Grin? Chelsea Grin. But like all that Chelsea Grin. You don't like uh, Eternal Nightmares? Yeah, I like Tom, like Tom Barber and stuff. I like all the stuff they did. But mm-hmm. like, I don't know, Alex Kohiga, whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. His like highs and all that old stuff was just like demonic as fuck. Like, <laughs> What's the last piece of merch that you bought? Band merch or like street clothes or? Um, we'll say band merch. Probably there's a band from Leeds in the, in England called On Hollow Ground. I bought one of their t-shirts when we played with them. Download or vinyl? Vinyl. Circle Pit or Wall of Death? Circle Pit. I think they just look pretty funny. <laughs> okay. If you had to choose one, past or future? Past. Al Pacino or Robert De Niro? Robert De Niro. I watched them uh, Meet the Fockers the other day and it was... <laughs> I keep forgetting how fucking funny he is. <laughs> super funny festival or club i've not really been to many festivals but i would say probably festival over clubs metallica or slipknot slipknot fortnite or minecraft i used to put a lot of hours into minecraft and i never really got into fortnite probably i got like one win once and i was just like oh this is absolutely terrible <laughs> so i'll go minecraft what's something that everyone seems to love but you just hate Ketchup. (laughs) Everyone absolutely loves it over here, and I I can't stand it. (laughs) Low gutturals or high screaming? Low gutturals. Demonic stuff like that. (laughs) Twitter or Instagram? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Most annoying band ever? Uh, That Trapped, whatever they're called, (laughs) they're all over Twitter. Fuck Trapped. Yeah, definitely. You can come for me next if he wants. <laughs> lift or stairs? Oh, definitely lift. I'm a lazy guy. <laughs> touring or recording? Definitely more recording than touring. I like touring, but like recording is just a completely different environment. And last question. PC or Mac? Mac all the way. Do you have a Mac yourself? I'm like, 
sat on my desk where I work and I'm on my like uh, MacBook and like my iMac's directly behind us, so I'm like all the way Apple. Yeah, me too. It's just easier. Yeah, definitely. Well, anyway, thank you for playing the icebreaker questions. I really appreciate it. No worries, man. Well, what have you been up to lately? Uh, I'm still not working due to corona, quarantine kind of thing. So I've been doing a lot of writing mm -hmm. and uh, working on a lot of band stuff. But other than that, like I've been playing a lot of Xbox and playing a lot of Switch. Like It's been getting a bit tedious. I want to go back to work now. Like, but I understand that. Uh, what type of work do you do? Uh, I'm a chef. Oh, no shit. Me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see you post all the time where it's like, I'm sick of work and I'm like, I, I know that vibe. <laughs> yeah, I've been working like crazy now. Like we're back open. I've been working like 60 hour weeks again. Fucking hell. I don't <laughs> miss it, but I, I like being off for this long now. So I think it's about three months. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of really do miss it. Yeah, definitely. So how long have you been in food? Uh, about six years, I think. Six, seven, a, a long time since I was like 18. Mm-hmm. I kind of got into like, I was at university, I got like a pot wash job on the side, like you know what you do, and then eventually mm -hmm. one day a guy rings in sick and he's like, go on the line, cook, I was like, all right, I'll go on the line. And then it just, <laughs> you never get out of it once you get into it. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself doing anything else like other than music, obviously? Not really, like music's always been like the thing that I've been really focused on and mm -hmm. obviously working in kitchens has just been that kind of extra income to help mm -hmm. but I think now I'm six years into it you kind of only you can only really go forward in like the catering industry really Definitely. I got like li literally no experience in anything else so I'm kind of I kind of shot myself in the foot there but <laughs> I'm in the same boat it's not even funny <laughs> yeah like the only good thing is if you lose your job or you quit you can literally get into any other kitchen if you've had enough experience. You just like, yeah, sick. Yeah, that, that's very true. How accessible are other kitchens to you? Do you have to travel very far? I work for a, a company called Mitchell and Butler in the UK. Mm -hmm. And they own like, it's a massive chain, but they own like several different restaurants and brands and shit. Mm -hmm. So I work for like two of them. So I'm, one's about 10 minutes from mine. One's about... 20 30 minutes from mine mm -hmm. and like one's like a massive industrial kitchen one's like a small kind of pub style kitchen mm -hmm. so it's it's not bad it's just like just a bit <laughs> all over sometimes you know what it's like yeah definitely and also like you know we're both probably tatted up or whatever it's kind of hard to get a job like with a bunch of tattoos. yeah definitely <laughs> unless you want to work at like a fucking mall store <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the good thing about being in a kitchen. Like, no one really cares. Yeah, definitely. As, as long as you've got your whites on, you've got your little hat on, sorted. <laughs> so, uh, do you guys do a lot of scratch cooking? Um, the place I'm at now, the one in town, like the city centre where I live, it's all tapas. So it's it's mainly basically a big bar, like, and you're just flashing out like tapas deals all the time. I've done a few different things. The first place I worked was like a smokehouse. I know obviously they're quite big in America. They're not that big over here. I did that. I've done a bit of fine dining. I've done a bit of everything now. Yeah. Fine dining is a different animal though. <laughs> oh, completely. You, 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 200 covers on a night, every plate lined out, sitting there with your micro herbs. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send it. I'm glad that you get the struggle. I'll, I'll have to vent to you sometimes then. <laughs> oh, any day, mate, any day. Okay, right, sounds can, great. What um, kind of kitchen do you work in? Uh, right now, like, well, I just came from fine dining, and then yeah. I found a company that's more, like, upscale, casual. They're kind of, like, more yeah. bar, like bar food, you know? That's and, pretty uh, same as mine. Yeah, and, I mean, I just like it a little bit better. It's, you know, it just alleviates the whole scratch cooking, and if I don't have stock, I don't have to run back there and fucking do that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. So I wanted to ask, because someone brought this to my attention on the last episode, I think. But um, so like, you know, if an American went to, let's say the UK, would they mm -hmm. catch kind of some steam for being American there? I don't think so. Not in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Like the guy that tattoos me, he's actually originally from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And he has like the thickest American accent you could ever like hear. 
I think he moved here maybe like 20 years ago and he's about 40, 30 mm-hmm. years. But like, he doesn't get any stick for it. I've met a lot of Americans over here. Depends how you bring yourself about, really. If you come in the room and you're all like, hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I just wonder, because like, you know, um, you know, I talked to Michael from October Ends and, yeah, you know, he, he was kind of talking about some of that too. But like, I just wonder, because me and my wife want to travel there. I was like, hey, I actually want to like meet you guys and just come up there and just see what it's about. Oh, that, yeah, that'd be sick. Well, when I was younger, we lived, this guy moved in down the street from us, his family, and they were from um, Florida. Mm-hmm. And he was like my older brother's age and him and my older brother like went, went to the same school. They were like best friends. And he's mm-hmm. just moved back from Florida over, and he's over here permanently. And they got on with everyone that lived in the community we lived in. Like, it's no okay. big deal. I think the mother was English though and the father was American. The okay. guy's still got a really thick accent. Like, but... <laughs> I just wonder how like we sound to you guys. I hope I don't sound like a total idiot. I think it's a li- a lot easier to like actually like understand what you're saying compared to me i think i sound absolutely strange <laughs> no you don't i can understand you completely uh, that's a relief because sometimes we'll be playing shows mm-hmm. and like i'll be talking in between songs just trying to make casual like hi guys everyone enjoying it. everyone's like what's he saying <laughs> where's he from and i'm just like guys we're from newcastle england i have to talk slower and slower yeah <sighs> gets annoying I understand. One day I'll have to fly you down here to the south and you'll have to see how terrible it is down here. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. I got a buddy with a lot of uh, flight points, so I can make something like that happen for sure. Oh, sick. Sick. Yeah. I'm down for that. Like, say you're going on vacation. Like, where do you, where would you go in the UK? Um, oh, I mean, I've traveled a lot, like, band-wise around the UK. And, like, when I was younger, I would go on it sounds strange, but we'd go on a lot of like weekends to, do you know what a caravan is? Uh uh-uh, no. Like, caravans are like the big trailers, like you can live, like the mobile trailers you live in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you'd go to like the seaside resorts with being an island and mm-hmm. you'd stay in a caravan for like a couple of days and stuff like that. Nice. Um, are you like a heavy drinker? Do you guys go out and socialize? Uh, I'm not a massive drinker. I'm like, I might have like a pint after work when I'm stressed, like mm-hmm. a couple of drinks. Or other than that, I don't really drink that much unless I'm going out, out. I'm either hundred percent, I'm going out, I'm getting fucked up Mm -hmm. or I'm not drinking. There's no in between. I totally get that. What about you? Um, I mean, I have a drink uh, after work. I mean, it's just like, I'm working when I do work now, it's like, I'm working a 12 hour shift. I I feel that That (laughs) after work, the first sip you drinks like, Oh God. Yeah. I mean, I might have like one, but that's it. Like, I don't get smashed every night or anything. I, no. I, I have to be at the top of my shit every day. So <laughs> I used to smoke a lot of like weed and shit like that. But like, I, I don't even do that anymore, dude. Like, uh, I like being clear headed, I guess. I think um, my only real vice is like, I used to smoke quite a bit, like a mm-hmm. bit of weed back when I was in uni and stuff. And I'd probably drink a bit more then. My only probably big vice now is I smoke like a lot of like cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Just normally but i think that's just the job like it just stresses <laughs> the fuck out yeah yeah uh i recently kind of picked up smoking like cigars <laughs> oh it's fancy as that it's super fancy uh they get a little expensive too like seven dollars a pop <sighs> yeah I, I couldn't afford that Not well, i don't age. i don't do it all the time i don't do oh. it all the time at all i was gonna imagine you outside after a ship just like chain smoking cigars <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> this guy's <laughs> This guy's got money. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. So explain, like, growing up in Newcastle, how's the alternative scene, in your opinion? It's, it's always been pretty good, but I remember it from the fact that I was in bands from quite a young age. And, like, there was always a lot of bands, like, my age and a little bit older, and there was always, like, shows a lot on the weekends, at, like, mm-hmm. loads of different venues. Now there's not so many venues, and it's, it's went a little bit downhill, but... Let's say it's still good. Obviously, not right now with lockdown. It's absolutely terrible. Mm-hmm. There's nothing going on. I, I think it was quite a good area to grow up in. It's a bit... It feels segregated because we're at the very top of England, more or less. Mm-hmm. And the nearest big city to us would be, like, Leeds-ish. Collectively, we had our own really big scene. 
because we're so segregated because obviously people think the UK and they think London. No one thinks Newcastle <laughs> all the way up there. No. I see a lot of people from Newcastle. So is, is, in your opinion, is it like a very big place? Uh, I'd say, yeah, it's a pretty big place. It's, yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. so it's obviously, it's not as big as London or anything, but I think there's a lot more to it. Like, if you ever came here, there's so many, like, you've got a busy town centre. It's got, like, a lot of, like, nightlife, a lot of, like, restaurants. And then I live just outside next to the coast. So mm-hmm. you, you go, like, 10 minutes outside of Newcastle in the car, and you're literally at the beach. Nice. So you've got like a nightlife beach and there's loads of like history and stuff around it. That's really cool. Um, how's the weather down there right now? I had to look there. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a bit gray, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Is it always kind of gray there? Uh, most of the, we'll get like maybe two, three weeks of hot weather a year. Okay, that's, that's not like, too bad. We're not used to hot weather. So when it's hot, it's like everyone's outside, shirts off. Everyone's just walking <laughs> around, drinking beers. Like, mad and then the next day it'll be raining and we're we'll like oh what's going on um i meant to ask you earlier or whatever i don't mean to jump around but like um do you eat a lot of like meat and stuff like that like being a chef yeah i tried to go veggie a long time ago and i i, I struggled putting weight on personally so i couldn't cut it completely mm-hmm. but i i try to like just have like main protein a day like i don't eat like a shit ton of it i lean more towards like fish than anything yeah, I've been a uh, vegetarian for the past couple of months now. I mean, I've done it yeah. before, but uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just really hard for me to eat meat, like, just being around it so much. Yeah. No, I do feel that. Like, I did, um, especially when you're doing, like, meat preps at work and you've got to prep, like, everything. You're like, oh, this is just grim. <laughs> yeah. What kind of blew it for me was, like, we get this case of, like, it's called random chicken. And then... Random. That's yeah. not a good name. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it's called on the case. You get it and like literally the, the breasts are like as big as my chest. Like it's fucking massive. And I'm like, there is yeah. no chicken that should be that big. It's so weird. I think ours is a lot more organic. Uh, sorry. Ours is a lot more organic over here. Mm. I think obviously it still depends like where, where you purchase it from. But I've seen a lot of stuff in America where like they get like turkeys and they're like five times the natural size. It should never be. You're like, what is wrong with that? <laughs> that's what grosses me out and then you put that in your body and it's just yeah but anyway well, i'll get off the food uh subject you know I, i've been listening to holy ghost like a lot lately oh, and, thank you. Um, yeah You're probably sure. most of the streams <laughs> maybe not but you guys have a lot of streams um, yeah now now we do which is pretty good mm-hmm. um so i you know i wanted to ask you personally so like it feels like there's some animosity towards religion. So like, what is your take on like Christianity and believing in a higher power? I've never really like thought too much into it. Like as a child, I was baptized. I was like, I went to church like a little bit. My family's quite like religious, mm-hmm. but I don't have any animosity towards it. Like I believe in, I believe in something, maybe not exactly like God or like anything like that. Like maybe just more towards, I don't know, something happens for a reason, that kind of stuff. But I don't think there's really any animosity. I think maybe it might come across like that a little bit, but this what okay. it is. Well, th- that, I'm glad you cleared the air because I just I just wanted to know. Um, nah, I, I've never really I've been too big into religion. I did like in schools over here, you have to do RA, like religious studies. And mm. I, I got the lowest grade because I didn't even write my name on the paper. I just couldn't be bothered with it. <laughs> Like, the sat is down. I was there for, like, an hour and a, hour and a half. And, like, I handed it in, and there was, like, nothing on it. I was like, you're going to fail. I was like, man. So what's, like, the most popular, I would say, like, church uh, in the UK or where you live? Popular church? Uh, it's a big cathedral in Newcastle Town Centre. That's mm. pretty, probably popular. The video, obviously, we did the video on the church. It's near my house, actually. There's, like, several churches around. I don't know what kind of church it is. I know they've all got different names and stuff. Mm-hmm. But probably maybe the one in town, or there's a place called Durham, not too far from us, that has a massive, like, old cathedral. That's pretty cool. I love the architecture of them. I love the look of them. Yeah. Like, I know, obviously, they hold a lot of, like, spiritual stuff and history stuff, and I appreciate that about it. But personally, I, I could never really see myself, like, kneeling in a church every Sunday. Yeah, me either. And my job i just can't do it <laughs> just, i just don't have time 
no days off. No days off. And when I when I am off, it's like I'm just I'm I'm doing this or just trying yeah. to hang out with my wife or something. Um, are you married? Are you in a relationship? What is your current? Yeah, uh, I've been in a relationship for like five years now. Nice. But this is this is like all house. Well, no, it's not a house. It's like a flat, but still. Do you have any plans of uh, leaving Newcastle, or are you just gonna kind of hang out there for a while? I don't know. I, I we're, me and my missus are currently like talking about eventually trying to buy a house because we've been renting for like three years now or something. And I always kind of say renting, you just kind of you're paying someone else's mortgage, right? Paying for someone else's house is. I'd rather actually own something, but it's just getting that money together, isn't it? Finding yeah. the right place as well. Yeah, that's, that's tough. And right now, it's not a good time. <laughs> I'm nah, speaking nah. from experience because I'm going through it right now. It kind of sucks. When but did I, you recently buy yours? Uh, well, we started the process as soon as COVID started. And <laughs> yeah. Not a good time frame. Man. Oh, good God, time. terrible. And um, so America sucks ass and the IRS shut down or whatever. And um, yeah. I can't get the proper paperwork I need as far as like the financials of myself. <laughs> it's just a pain in the ass. That sounds a bit. Yeah, I couldn't imagine trying to like move out or like sort anything in this current climate. Mm -hmm. So I think we're just going to stick where we are for a little bit. We're like where we are enough and then save some money and just try and find somewhere to buy. The only mm -hmm. good thing is in Newcastle, the houses are way cheaper than like down south in London. You can okay. get like, you can probably get like a house here, whereas in London for the same price, you might get like a flat, like a one bedroom flat. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it's like over there, but. Um, well, I live in like, you know, the Southern United States or whatever. And the yeah. uh, cost of living is a lot cheaper. What well, compared to like the North of it? Yeah, like if you were to go to like uh, California, that's oh, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just I don't. It's it's ridiculous. You you can't even afford that. Is the UK economy you know doing well as far as you know? I read a little bit of the news and stuff, and a little bit of updates and whatnot on like Twitter and stuff. But I don't know. I have just got like a message about going back to work before, and like obviously a lot of people are on furlough pay, and they're mm -hmm. talking about reduced hours and this and that, and it's. It seems a lot up in there, but our prime minister is absolutely awful. Like he's just absolute idiot. <laughs> well, ours is pretty trash, but a lot of people I mean, like him. Yeah, same for ours. They literally Boris Johnson and Donald Trump are like the same kind of person, more or less. Really? Just absolutely. Yeah. Have you ever seen a picture of Boris Johnson? Not really. I feel really ignorant. Um, I honestly I don't fuck with politics too much because I think it's all yeah. corrupt and crooked. <laughs> I I get that. Google a picture of him after this and like him and there's pictures of maybe him and Trump somewhere and like they literally like look like brothers but like ugly <laughs> step brothers. <laughs> really, I have to check it out. That's hilarious. It's like the same guy reskinned over. It's just awful. <laughs> um. So your band name Day Shifter. Do you guys ever yeah. get confused with like Day Seeker? Nah, I don't. But, nah, I I didn't even hear Day Seeker like last year, and I was like, I searched our name, and they came up, and I was like, this is they're so much better than us. Ah. This is so much <laughs> so much of a better name. Why didn't I think of this? Uh, <laughs> you guys are good, man. Give yourself some credit there. Oh, right, cheers, man. Where did the name come from? I think I had the name idea because we had like an old band that kind of went downhill. Mm -hmm. and I had like loads of. We had loads of songs ready to release and I was like, yeah, just let's think of a cool name. And I was like, what's like a one word kind of thing. And that clicked somewhere along the lines and it's just been like that ever since. But mm -hmm. I, I don't think I ever thought it. I just kind of was like, yeah, that sounds good. Let's go with that. <laughs> Were you the founding member or was it like you and a mate or like how'd that work? Like I said before, it was from another band. Like the old band went absolutely to pot. Everyone mm -hmm. was like, yeah, this is not going out like, anywhere. It's not going very good. And I've always been quite, like, steadfast with music. I've, like, I've always wanted to do it. I won't, like, pack it in. I'll just keep going and keep going. So uh, it was more or less me, Tom, James, our old bass player, and, and for just, like, yeah, let's keep going. Let's find a new drummer. Let's find all this kind of stuff and just go for it. I've been in bands now for maybe, like, 10 years, and me and Anf, who now plays bass, he was a guitarist originally. We've been in the same bands for like 10 years now. 
Mm-hmm. It's always kind of been me and him. Um, have you always just done vocals or have you done other parts? Uh, I'm a I'm a guitarist, straight up. Like I've always played guitar. This is the first band I've done vocals in. Well, not the first. The, the last band we had before this, we had like, um, I was playing guitar for it. And I was like main songwriter. Mm-hmm. And um, we had a vocalist and we got like a tour off that to go to Spain. And I was like, yeah, sick. Let's go to Spain. <laughs> and like a week before he was like, yeah, I've got no money. I'm not coming. I was like, all right. So we had like a week or two weeks to be like, yeah, let's sort this out. And they're like, right, Nathan, you're doing vocals. I was like, am I? Like, you're doing vocals. I was like, cool. <laughs> and I, I never went back from there. I was kind of like, this is really fun. I don't have to hold the guitar anymore. I can just yeah. walk around. <laughs> it went from there, basically. And I've never, I still have a massive part because I still, I still write all the guitar and all the music. Mm-hmm. And like, so I still play guitar quite a bit. I just don't play it live. I just sing. Now that you guys feel like you're gaining traction or whatever, like where where do you think that came from? Do you think it came from this new single? I think definitely we had a little bit of traction before, mm-hmm. but we spent like a year. We didn't release anything due to like certain circumstances with like what was going on with us and what was going on with the label we were on and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we took the... Holy Ghost is the first song we've self-released in a long time. And we took that kind of dare. And obviously, as soon as it came out, it kind of blew up a little bit. Got, like, a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. Which I'm not sure where that even came from. I don't know if maybe it's because I was spamming everyone with a link or, like, <laughs> obviously, Dreambound's quite a big channel. They get quite a lot of views. I Honestly, I don't know where the tractions came from, but I'm glad it's came from somewhere. Definitely. Dreambound, <laughs> is that a record label or is that... I think they're just like a YouTube channel, but I don't know. Like, obviously we connect them because they mostly put out like melodic hardcore. Mm-hmm. And in the past, we try to get videos on them in the past a couple of times. Every time they turned us down, like, nah, that doesn't suit work. And then obviously we sent this Holy Ghost over and they're like, yeah, let's put it on. And we're like, really? Yeah, finally. <laughs> Cheers, guys. There's another band I saw on there that was like Envisions. Oh, yeah, they're, they're from the UK as well. That's sick. What were some memorable like shows that you saw growing up uh, in the UK? The first show I ever went to, the first like metal show, I went and seen Papa Roach. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the venue I went to is called the O2 Academy and there's like two rooms, there's a small room, a big room. And the big room's got like seating at the top, like a balcony. Mm-hmm. And I was in the balcony, I was like 12, just stood up like, yeah. <laughs> Head banging the fuck, that was pretty cool. I saw a lot of bands before they blew up in the small room of that as well, like bands like Of Mice and Men, bands like Amity, Affliction. I've seen like loads of bands in that small room and that small room's like 300 people. And you're like, you look at them bands now and they're playing like a thousand, 2000 caps. You're like, wow, this is mad. I can't really pick a top one off the top of my head though. Like, Mm -hmm. what about you? Oh, that's tough, man. Um, Honestly, a memorable show for me was probably Chelsea Grin Headliner. And it was like, a, well, actually, it was like a co-headliner with uh, The Word Alive. And it was like Stay Sick Tour. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was just a small venue. And it was in this, like, club that inevitably got shut down called Tremont in Charlotte. And yeah. um, I don't know. It just it just felt like it was kind of like the last, like, hurrah in that little club. And now oh, the club's, like, done. So it kind of sucks. I guess another one was, like, uh, the last time I saw Gore was at Tremont again. Uh, I don't know if you remember a band called Battle Cross, nah. but um, do you know Alex Bent from Trivium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The drummer. Yeah, the so drummer? he, yeah. yeah, he's the drummer. So he was the drummer of Battle Cross, and then we ended up just talking to Battle Cross the whole time, like during the Gore set. So that was really cool. We were just like hanging out with them. Ah, that's pretty cool. Like that's about all I got. But like Warp Tour was a huge thing uh, here. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've I ever just... been to Warp Tour. Nah, one of my cousins went to Warp to her once. I was pretty jealous about that. Mm-hmm. We don't get anything like that. We, we never really got anything like that over here. Obviously, growing up in bands, you'd always kind of see the loads of Warp to our videos on YouTube of like people just go like see like 30 bands and it's looking like absolutely, it's the sickest day in the world. Oh man, yeah. I miss it so much. <laughs> how, how often did you go to it? Um, I went to it like every year since like, I would say like 2014 or something like that until it yeah. shut down, which I mean, it wasn't very long. Cause I mean, 
I was kind of too intimidated to go to shows because I just don't like people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I feel that. I don't like large crowds. Always kind of freaked me out. I just don't mm-hmm. like it. But I saw some good bands there. That's kind of why, like, I go to shows now, and I'm just like, I'm just gonna stand at the back and let me drink. Like. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> I'm too old for that mosh pit. Last time I got to a mosh pit, I got into a Cannibal Corpse mosh pit, and I lost oh, my God. shoe. <laughs> And I was trying to find it, and I just got fucking elbowed by this big fat dude. Oh yeah. god, it, it was fucked up. I don't know. I don't like shows like that. Like I'm kind of, I've kind of changed my perception of like death metal and black metal. Like going to these yeah. shows. I don't think I've ever been like a black metal show. I don't know. They don't really help you out. It, like I don't know how to. Oh, describe if you it. fall down, they just kind of like stare at you. Like you yeah, they're like fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They just don't. It doesn't have that camaraderie that you get at like core shows. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. Just go to one and just tell me how you feel about it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. I'll I'll go to kind of a up show. Don't worry. Because <laughs> I went to a behemoth show. I guess that's more like black and death metal. But yeah. So what was like the biggest show that you guys played? The biggest one is probably we played. Do you know King Eight Ten? Mm-mm. King Eight Ten's like they're like from um, Flint. It's called Flint something and somewhere in America. Oh, Flint, Michigan, the, maybe. Yeah, yeah. They opened for, like, Slipknot a couple of years ago. And, like, they got a lot of traction because of that, I think. But they're quite a big band anyway. Mm. We, we opened a show for them at the O2 Academy. And um, the sound check went to shit because the guy was just absolutely awful, the sound engineer. And I was like, mate, hurry up. And he was like, go on now. We're like, we're not ready. We, we need five more minutes. He was like, the doors have been opened for ten minutes. Go on now. We're like, no, no. <laughs> and then... <laughs> They pushed the doors back, but it worked in our advantage because people were waiting to get in. So I was still on stage, like facing our drummer lane, and I was like, right, I think we're about ready. I turned around and like the room was just full, like four or 500 people in there maybe. Mm-hmm. And like, we literally played the first song and the room just went wild. I was like, this is mad. That's awesome. Okay, I feel stupid now. I know you're talking about King A10. They're like, yeah. um, like, I don't know, not like new metal, but they're kind of like a mirror or something like that. Kind of, like, the, it's, I don't know, the vocalist has a weird style. He's not screaming all the time, but he's, like, talking, but he's, like, really, really aggressive. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw him backstage, and he's, like, the biggest bloke I've ever seen. He's, like, <laughs> staying clear of you. Don't touch me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> now, I, I haven't listened to that band personally, but I've heard a lot of people talk about them. They're yeah. kind of, like, on that, on that list of, like, most cringy bands ever. Yeah, they've got a lot of, like, followers, though. I think it's because they did support Slipknot. Like, mm-hmm. uh, the the venue Slipknot played is the Metro Radio over here, which is, like, the biggest venue in Newcastle. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if you're open for a band like Slipknot, loads of people are going to see you. Loads of people are going to notice you and be like, yeah, this band's sick. Or yeah. Maybe not, but... What was, like, your favorite band, like, growing up as a kid, like, you were obsessed with? Maybe if I go back to my teenagers... Probably the first heavy, heavy band I got in was Attack Attack. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was, but that cringy synth core stuff, but I absolutely <laughs> loved it. I thought it was dead funny. Uh, I liked it when it was, uh, you know, predominant or whatever. Do you like Beartooth? Yeah, I like Beartooth. I went and saw them before lockdown in Glasgow in Scotland. Nice. It was a good show. It was uh, Beartooth, Amity, and I can't remember the other band, but it was a really, really sick show. Do you like Amity a lot? Yeah, I love Amity. I've seen them like four or five times now. I think it's just a really, really solid band. Mm -hmm. Is it something about like mixing like, I don't know, catchy choruses with like breakdowns? Is it something like that? Yeah, I think it's just like the diversity and the dynamics. Like you can go, I think I capture a lot in our music, but the fact you can go from like such a heavy and like powerful, like strong, aggressive bit to something that's so like soft and delicate and catchy and like meaningful. Mm-hmm. It just works well. Like, I still obviously like really heavy music, but if I'm listening to like a band, like maybe Slaughter to Prevail, I'll listen to like one song and I bet, yeah, this is really, really heavy. I listen mm-hmm. to that song and I bet, oh my God, this is actually the same song, whatever. I get bored so quick of it. Yeah. I, I just, I love them catchy choruses and like all the ambience and stuff like that. I, I love that you said that because that's what comes to mind when I hear like Holy Ghost. Um, I like the dynamics, man. I like that yeah, you can sing that. along. Yeah. yeah. I think I think that's why I keep listening to it over and over. It's just so catchy, yeah. you know? 
I'm I'm glad we actually added them eventually because when I started doing vocals in the band, it was primarily just screaming because that's mm-hmm. what we did. And then what kind of came around to doing the songs that we've got out now, well, Holy Ghost and whatever songs we're going to put out next. And it was a case of, there's no point just being heavy for the sake of being heavy. Mm-hmm. If it's heavy, it needs to have a reason to be heavy. I, I need to branch out and sing. Like this. I can't be a one-trick pony forever, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I get that. Um, I mean, that's why I like bands like uh, Devil Wears Prada, who I'm kind of representing today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I used to love Devil Wears Prada growing up. I kind of lost track of them a little bit. Like I remember listening to, what's the album? Uh, with Roots Above, maybe? Yeah, Roots Above. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, yeah. like, I, I used to hammer that album on my little uh, iPod. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Um, have you checked out the new album? No, I haven't. It's good. Oh, I need to check that one out. That's my favorite one. Oh, fair. I'll check it. I'll, I'll check it after this. I swear. Definitely. Uh, what's a bit, What's an album that I need to check out? Have you listened to a lot of Dayseeker? Yes, I've oh, I've been stuck on that. Yeah, I've been absolutely hammering that album. Um, another album I've been hammering. It's the Emma Rosa album, an old one with the Fox on. I can't remember what it's called. Okay, I haven't really got into Emma Rosa. I'm just gonna be honest, but I'll check that out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't remember that. I need to literally go and find the album now because I'm going to get so annoyed. It's called Versus. Versus? Okay. I'll check it out. I'll definitely yeah. make a note of that. It's a solid album. Okay, so a question that I ask everyone on the show, this is kind of like a every podcast thing, but what is a crazy road story that you want to share? We have quite a few, but I think the funniest one is, it's a, it's a little bit long-winded and I'll dial it down a little bit. Uh, we played a show... And we were playing in Brighton the next day, and Brighton is like South Coast England. Mm-hmm. And uh, the van driver was like, you need somewhere to stay at night. And I was like, right, we need somewhere to stay. And I was like, Tom, sort somewhere to stay. So Tom goes on his phone, and he pulls up, and he's like, this place looks sick. It's a hostel. I don't know if you have hostels over there, but like, he said it was a private room for just a six hour. I was like, yeah, cool, we'll go stay in this hostel, whatever. Got out. I had like my laptop and my bag, all like my expensive shit on it. I was like, let's go to the hostel. Got in there. Went to the reception, the guy was like, here's your blankets. I was like, it's a bit weird. Like, <laughs> handed with the blankets, that like, your room's over there. Walked into the room, put the light on, and there was like, about 60 bunks with blokes in them. Like, every bunk was full. And people were just staring at where There was like 60 people in this one room. And I was like, yeah, I'm out. I got into the bed for like five minutes. And like, I took my shoes off because they were like big bunk beds, like four mm-hmm. up. I got my shoes, took my shoes into bed with us because like, they're getting stolen. And uh, mm. I checked our group chat and Anf was like, yeah, I can't stay here. So we ended up leaving. And this was like one in the morning, walking mm. around Brighton with nowhere to stay. We got talk, like there's loads of homeless people in Brighton. They were like, are you guys homeless? We're like, no, we're just a band. <laughs> <laughs> and we ended up sleeping in a train station. And I uh, went to get breakfast the next one. It was like the worst experience of my life. Funny, but it was absolutely terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Do you have any more that you want to share? Last, last tour we did, we played a show in Edinburgh, which is in Scotland. And then what, it was the fir- this is the first time I've ever been out drinking afterwards. And I got really, really messed up. Like, <laughs> I was we're walking back to the Airbnb because ever since that hostel, I've been like, I'm sorting the accommodation. No one else's. I'm not staying with 60 blokes in one room. No good. So we've been doing like Airbnbs ever since. We got one on this night out. We're walking back to the thingy. I was like walking down the street, like with no clothes on, more or less. Absolutely messed up. So was Liam. So was Kyle, our guitarist. And uh, we got back and we sat eating food, like kebabs, like shawarma kebabs. Mm-hmm. Absolutely messed up. And uh, because I was walking around absolutely bollock naked, Tom was like, I'm going to do the same. Tom strips off and Liam sat on the floor, our drummer, eating his kebab and Tom walks over naked, punches his kebab <laughs> and was like, Liam sat staring at his food like, what's going on? Like, starts picking it off the floor, absolutely drunk as bits. And mm. so it's just Tom running around this fucking flat, bollock naked. Just loads of stories like that where we just do absolutely stupid stuff for the fun of it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome though. It's good to have people like that in your life. 
The, apart from when he, he started chasing like Liam around the flat and I could just see his like dick running around. I was like, oh God, this is, this is too much for me. <laughs> oh shit. So are you guys unsigned at the moment? Yeah, yeah, we are unsigned. Okay. Have you guys ever been signed? We won a label for about a year and a half and then we packed it in recently, obviously before the release of Holy Ghost, just because it wasn't for us at all. We just didn't vibe with it at all. I don't not agree with labels. I think some bands do need labels. I do should go for labels. I just think it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Especially in this modern day and age where like you can be your own label from home. Definitely. I like that you say that because, you know, I get mixed opinions on that. Like, do you sign? Do you not sign? But I've seen some very successful bands not not having to sign. So Yeah. I think it just depends on if you're willing to do the work you don't need that middleman. But if you're not middle to do the work, maybe you, you do need that middleman. Mm. It, it just literally depends on the band and what they're doing. Like a, a band I look up to a lot for that is Our Last Night. They posted a massive video. I think it was Sennheiser did the interview with them. And they're like, we don't, we're not on a label. We haven't been on one for seven years. Mm. And I, I follow them all on Instagram. And the singer lives in a massive house. Like he's making money. Like mm. clearly he's living a good life. Label, no label. He's, he's absolutely loving it. Mm -hmm. Aren't they known for like doing covers? Yeah, yeah, they're known for doing covers. They've put out a lot of original music as well. But like, they're one of the bands that if you go on their Spotify, they've got like over like one million monthly listeners. Shit. And like, their videos get a lot of attention. They've got like so many different platforms they get attention from. So mm. I, I don't think the covers is a bad thing because if you do a cover and it gets a million views, and you use YouTube, the tool that, like a tool that it is, and put the annotations for your actual music. If 50% of the people that watch your cover, because they like that artist that you covered, click on your original music and vibe with your original music, it's just, it's a bigger promotion thing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. Cause like, I guess what's similar for me is like reactions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And when I was doing a lot more reactions, I was gaining a lot more traction with like my podcast episodes, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's I agree. It's just a case of feeding back to it. Like no matter what you do, if you can use that tool to kind of feed back to your main product or whatever, it's always going to help. Definitely. I need to do some reactions. I'm getting lazy. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any guilty pleasures? Like as far as music, something that you wouldn't really necessarily admit to? Eh, not really. I don't think I, I, I like... I'll listen to a bit of everything on a most daily basis. Like, at work, I think I'm the only person that really likes, like, heavy music. Mm -hmm. But we have a, one of the chefs there, uh, his name's Jorge, he's Spanish. Mm -hmm. And any time me and him work together, I put on, like, Mexican party music, and he absolutely loves it. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the other guys are into, like, rap music and stuff like that, and I'll just put that on, or I'll put, like, uh, the head chef that I have, he's massive, like, 70s and 80s fan. I'll put, like, 80s cheesy hits on and he loves it you have to be the dj at work all the time i i, I love being the dj at work because if i'm on a breakfast by myself people will come in the morning it'll be like breakdowns like Bleh! and everyone's like what's <laughs> going on and then it'll get around a late lunch and they'll be like up 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 and everyone's like what's <laughs> who's whose music is this and i'm just like it's mine <laughs> that's great man like time has flown um i'm gonna start wrapping it up because i usually try to hit that hour mark what is like something that you would want to change about the current state of music if you could change it if i could change anything about the current state of music i'd change maybe just maybe the stigma around genres and like bands like maybe sticking to one genre or sticking to one style and like i, I kind of see a lot of bands grouped together like bands will tour with certain bands and all this kind of stuff i'd like to say it branch out like i remember back maybe in like 2012 when you'd see tour posters and the, the lineup was just absolutely burst. I would have like a really heavy band on, like a post hardcore band. Mm -hmm. And then like, maybe like one of them 2000s synth core bands and all that kind of stuff. And now you see lineups and it's like, it's a death core lineup. There's like four death core bands on. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you don't see a lot of like smaller openers as well. I'd like to see a lot more smaller bands on bigger shows. I don't know if that's just myself being like, I want to play bigger shows, but... <laughs> At the same time, I think a lot of smaller bands do deserve it. Definitely. I think it's like, I think the people that are curating this stuff is like, 
they're not very aware of like who's really like coming up or like who's kind of yeah yeah you know it's like I mean? the same with playlists on spotify every metal playlist has got the same big bands on but mm-hmm. like, uh, if data rama puts out a new song every playlist will have it slipknot puts out a new song every playlist will have it every metal playlist and like in that time space all these big bands are putting music out smaller bands are just absolutely pumping loads of really really good music but it's going so far under the radar that no one's picking it up mm-hmm. and some of these songs are better than some absolutely huge signed bands in my honest opinion no i totally agree i mean that's something i've been preaching i can't listen to like metal radio stations because they're always trash nah. we have like alternative rock uh radio station in charlotte and they mm-hmm. played nothing but like 90s and 2000s music and i'm like what the I- fuck is this well, like Limp Bizkit and stuff. Yeah, or like, it's worse. It's like Three Doors Down and Puddle oh, of God. Mud and just trap, like, butt rock. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, nothing current. <laughs> nah, nah. I don't know. If you have a platform like that, you need to, like, pump out something with quality. Yeah, you need to at least do, like, Underground Hour or something where you just pump out new bands for people to listen to. Mm-hmm. It's same with some clubs. There's, like, a, there's an old club in Newcastle. It's really, really cool. but. You, you do hear a lot of the same kind of music. The same 2000s hits, the same stuff like Paramore's on every time or... Yeah. Dis- disturbed. You just... Yeah. You're like... It's a good song, but like I've heard it so many times. Yeah. And then like, you know, I'll tell people about my podcast and they're like, oh, have you ever heard of uh, Ramstein? And I'm like, get the fuck out of nah, here. Nah, never heard of them. Don't know who they are. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. There's so many out of touch, like metal heads. It drives yeah, me insane. Definitely. But anyway, um, dude, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I always ask, fun. I always ask like one final question. If you were to die tomorrow, let's just say you're on death row. You're, you're going to be on the chopping block tomorrow. What is one last wish that you just want before you die? Can I play one last show? Cause this quarantine is doing my tits now. <laughs> Let me play one last show, like a big show, and that'll be it. That'd be a sick way to go out, for sure. Yeah, I'll just, like, I'll play one song. That's, that's all I have to play. I'll play Holy Ghost, and then I'll just, like, I'll eat myself afterwards. <laughs> nice. I like the answer. That's really cool. Yeah, Dude, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Anything that you want to say, any final thoughts, anything you want to leave the viewers, listeners, before we head out? Go support small bands. Go support my band. Be, be an actual music fan. Don't listen to the same playlist you've been listening to for the past 10 years. Check out new bands. Check out as much as you can. And when quarantine's over, actually go to shows this time. Like, Don't be like, I'm busy. I've got, <laughs> cr- I've got a knit this weekend. I've got bowling. Like, Go to a show. You'll have a good time. Even if you stood in the back just drinking a beer like I do. <laughs> like, definitely, definitely. Straight forward. Well, there again, that was Nathan Dillon from the band Day Shifter, the Day Shifter, UK melodic hardcore. Go check out the new music video for the single Holy Ghost on YouTube, and it's on all streaming platforms available. So thanks again, Nathan, for being on the show. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you guys. No worries. Well, that pretty much does it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like the video and subscribe. That way you don't miss a new episode of Native Native Diamond Diamond Podcast. Podcast. And until I see you guys on a future video, shine Shine on. on. Hell Hell yeah. Hell yeah.